Hello good people, George with Virtual Staging here. This time I decided to compare how SketchUp with V-Ray will perform on the same scene against the 3 ds Max and Corona render. This video is a little bit longer than usual, but you can use the timestamps to move across the video. And without further ado, let's crack on. The first part of this video in SketchUp is where I'll photo match the photo, which I have, and if you are new to the virtual staging with V-Ray and SketchUp by the way, make sure to watch my other video on this topic right now on the screen or down below in the comments. And as always, in Photomatch the starting point is aligning the axis and building the scene geometry which should resemble more or less what you have in the space regardless of the internal or external one. For those of you who doesn't know what the photo match is, let me tell you something about this little yellow rectangle behind the human cattle figure which disappeared. The photo match is a feature which allows you to match the 3D models with the perspective of a photo. You can do this either in SketchUp, 3ds Max, Cinema 4D, Maya, Modu and many many other in, in some 2D softwares can do it by the way, but it might be in, under the different name. For example in 3ds Max it's called Perspective Match and in SketchUp is photo matching, doesn't matter, so it's, it does the same thing. A good practice is to have the lines as long as possible and as far as possible between them. Generally the process consists of matching those lines, the X, Y and Z axis, in the 3D over a photograph loaded in the software. This allows you to copy the models from that software or to add a new ones just like in the virtual staging I teach in this channel. And by the way, subscribe if you want to learn more how to do this magic like a pro. This will make you achieve more accurate results and the last but not least, the scene origin is important to be on a visible place, just as in my scene where I had my little yellow rectangle fella. Photo matching in might seem really quick and easy, but that's not really the case. Being the foundation of each project, photo matching must be done in the correct way if you want to achieve the good results, which you're gonna see in the couple of next steps in this video. Over the next 60 seconds, you will see me how I set up the shadow capture material of V-Ray for SketchUp. Mostly the idea is to create a new material called wrapper with W and a new generic material. That generic material should be pasted inside the base material inside the wrapper material plus the tweaks of the options in there. <laughs> and by the way, a really cool trick is to use the material override switch in V-Ray and it will allow you to quickly see if you're matching the geometry of the space from the, your photo with the, your true 3D geometry which you've built. <laughs> Gosh, that was tongue twist over there. And then I cut holes for windows, added light planes, cut more holes, disabled the sun, made the light planes invisible with more directionality, imported a table and four chairs from the 3D warehouse and then played with the glass for 20 minutes straight. I bet nobody knows about this tool. <laughs> of course everybody knows it, <laughs> except the beginners. Well, and this is the idea, with this cool tool, which I don't know his name by the way, but that's a secret, you can select any polygon from your scene, as you can see right now on the screen, I'm just picking this, this polygon and then this magical tool gets my material inside the very asset editor where I can tweak my material. And by the way, I do know how it's called, it's called scene interaction tool, super cool, like James Bond stuff. After a while I played James Bond over the virtual staging, it was time for me to open the V-Ray frame buffer, load my background photo inside the background menu and have my background as a proper background of all backgrounds. Well, meanwhile I've played with the exposure setting just to look even cooler. And now seriously, the idea of loading the background image inside the frame buffer is to prevent changing the colors, exposure and in general any tweaks of your photos. And what you need is to only add the 3D models, get their shadows on a separate layer and to not affect the image below, hence all those James Bond operations. And don't forget after having the photo in the frame buffer to uncheck the background checkbox inside the environment tab because it will start clashing and it will destroy your image as you can see right now on my screen. And by the way, in 3ds Max and Corona, this process is a different. Go and watch the other video on the screen right now and after this one of course and then you will learn the other processes plus the 6 rules of virtual staging and how to be called virtual stager. And meanwhile, I added a couple of pieces for actually one piece of furniture and beautiful plant in a pink pot and I changed their materials and I think you had enough from me so I'll keep quiet for a while. <laughs> Gosh, that was untranslatable. <laughs> Hmm. 
virtual staging and relax. Virtual staging and relax. Virtual staging and relax. Virtual staging and relax. Three, two, one, and I hope you had a good peaceful seconds and your mind is in a good condition. Again, basically what I did is that with the textures of those leaves and the soul is to increase their brightness with, uh, it was too dark to my taste, and with the super cool color correction tool which comes with the V-Ray Asset Editor and it was pretty much ready to, to render. I don't think I like the look of you how you look me. You dear must go. Bye bye. That's it pretty much guys, this is the result I achieved in 35 minutes, boggling minutes and now is the time to hop on the 3ds Max and Corona render virtual staging machine. Did I tell you to leave a comment if you have any questions or then like the video or subscribe?